Twisted Music, Episode 3, Bacterial Contamination and Why You May Already Be at Risk. Before we begin this project, I'd like to offer a disclaimer. We will be discussing several situations which may be triggering for certain individuals. Therefore, viewer discretion is strongly advised. If you've been a part of the side of the internet that had, at some point, become intrigued by Vocaloid songs featuring horrific content or chilling stories, then you've most likely heard of bacterial contamination. With a music video torn straight from your deepest nightmares, the entire song's 3 minute and 56 second runtime can often seem endless. Not only is it disturbing in nature, but its deep personal lyrics and allusion to an all-encompassing, incurable disease make it a very haunting listen. However, many may be asking themselves just what it is that the song is trying to communicate. And today, I'm here to discuss that in grand detail. Because this bacterial contamination is spreading, and the truth is, you may already be infected. If you haven't personally listened to the song as of yet, I'd encourage you to stop the video now and go give it a listen. If you're easily disturbed by unsettling imagery, then I'd just listen without watching the actual music video. I won't be showing any of that in today's presentation due to its graphic nature. However, if you're interested in witnessing the full experience for yourself, now would be the time to do so. That being said, let's dive into this project feet first. This song takes off like a rocket, the first utterance being a horribly simple command delivered so quickly that some even miss it. When slowed down, a dim voice seems to be speaking to the singer, commanding her to end her life. And with that bombshell, the song breaks into a musical prelude, allowing the horrifying instruction to rot in the tense air while the listeners contemplate its implication. Then, once that's over, the voice continues, saying, we've decided we're going to ignore her and will embarrass everyone involved with her, right? This directive immediately gives us the impression that the voice from the beginning of the song is talking to a small group of people, lobbying for their inclusion and personally estranging the singer in any way possible. This idea is further expounded upon in the next verse, because finally, the singer pipes up, interrupting them by openly claiming that she knows of their intentions, saying, I'm their target. I heard someone whispering it. Doesn't she get on your nerves? Just like that. This line is incredibly important because it lets us know that the singer is somewhat undeserving of the treatment she's incurred. She hasn't been painted as someone who's done something unforgivable or heinous. In fact, it's not stated that she did anything at all other than simply existing, somehow causing those around her to grow irritated with her. After that, we're treated to a terror-ridden chorus in which the singer echoes, Contaminated by bacteria, I got stuck in this situation and my heart has been eaten away. Then, the singer repeats the two words, it hurts, multiple times, each somehow sounding more desperate than the last, despite the lack of change in the singer's inflection. After the chorus, the singer goes on to lament that no matter how much she wants to be saved, nobody is her friend and that she's ultimately alone. That aside, she continues to assert that she's in pain, but despite that, can find no lasting relief. She recants that everyone around her despises her, mournfully asking, what do you want from me? Before relaying that her heart has been broken into a million pieces, and it's slowly and painfully fading away. We're then offered another brief intermission in which the music allows us to digest what's just been revealed. But the journey is far from over. In fact, it's only just beginning. And the process of contamination has only just peaked, resulting in a casualty that's even more horrific than the original. The singer reluctantly admits that she's taken someone down with her now, not satisfied to live with her diagnosis all alone. Instead of befriending that person, she infects them as well, with the sole purpose of making herself feel better in the dire situation she's enduring. But this story takes yet another dark turn from here, as the singer relays that the kind girl which she met gave her hand to the singer trustingly, reaching out with hopes of helping the singer in her current state. However, the damage has been done, and it's far too late for that. The singer states, I'm sorry, 
and I promised to apologize. But it's clear that that never ended up happening, as the thought is then promptly forgotten for the rest of the song. The chorus repeats, contaminated by bacteria, you're not worth believing. Lately, even common sense is eaten away. I can no longer hold on to my purity. Since the bacterial contamination has spread, you want to be tougher. However, the singer isn't finished. Even if the contaminated could survive, the hurt that they incurred would live on forever. Then the story twists again as the bridge arrives, the lyrics letting us know that somehow the original contamination has subsided. The singer admits that somehow she's feeling much better. But that joy is short-lived when she relays the reason for her pleasure, claiming that she's happy simply because she transmitted the contamination to another victim. Then, she laughs monotonously for a good four seconds, giving her vocal display a deeper and more sinister tone, almost immediately. The final chorus presents a grim reality, the singer rejoicing in the fact that everyone is now contaminated by bacteria, and that their fatal wounds are incurable. Sadly enough, even while trying to end their existence, they can't perish with any sort of grace. Despite the contamination having spread beyond the singer herself, giving her a sense of wider inclusion, she looks around herself once again and realizes that she's all alone. And even given that fact, the last words that she repeats are the same as before. Simply saying, it hurts, it hurts. Now, I don't know about you, but much like other songs in my past, this one was one that I found particularly interesting when it came to the small vocaloid horror genre. I hadn't looked into it very deeply since I was young upon discovering it, and was more than pleased to take it at face value and enjoy the creepy visuals and haunting tone. But this song is so deep that I now know it deserves far more attention than that, because its message isn't just one that's transitionally terrifying. No, it is far more than that. It's a warning, forming a picture of a very real and present threat to society. Because the entire idea of bacterial contamination isn't referring to the actual scientific condition, but rather to a condition directly and personally propagated by humans themselves. Bullying. Now, to fully understand the parallel presented in this song, we need to look at what bacterial contamination actually is. Unlike the medical term bacterial infection, which refers to multiple conditions that can be propagated by the casual introduction of harmful bacteria to the body, the term bacterial contamination is selected to be the title of this song instead, and I believe it's even more fitting. According to Wikipedia, bacterial contamination occurs when bacteria multiplies on food and causes it to fully and thoroughly spoil. Consuming that food can cause humans to become incredibly sick, and this can happen simply by coming in direct contact with the bacteria itself, or with the toxins which they secrete. Depending on the surrounding environment, bacterial contamination can reach unsafe levels in as short a time as 24 hours after the contamination began. This is largely important because the presentation of the contamination which is pictured in the song is connected to the true description in many ways. But once again, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go back a bit. This song begins with a very direct command, giving us an indication of just how badly the bullies are treating the singer. Not only have they decided to estrange her, ignoring her and ostracizing her from those around her, but they've directly goaded her encouraging her to end her life. Like I mentioned before, it's really not clear that the singer did anything significant to warrant this sort of treatment. But for whatever reason, she's forced to endure it all the same. As the bullying continues and worsens, the singer is forced up against the wall, all the while realizing that the circumstances are slowly destroying her, and that the pain she feels is endless and without reprieve. She desperately seeks relief, but there is no area in which she can truly find that. Her journey becoming a torturously short one that begins and ends with the same toxic cycle being allowed to continue on repeat. 
She clearly expresses confusion as to why this is happening to her, while her pain continues to deepen verse by verse. But the really detrimental portion of the song is when the singer realizes that to feel better about her situation, she needs to see someone else enduring the same conditions. As you most likely know, misery enjoys company, and the singer has ascribed significant worth to this idea. We're made aware that someone reached out to her in a kind and compassionate way. But, by that point, she was no longer open to receiving help, but rather was ready to relieve her own loneliness and pain by causing someone else to endure such conditions as well. And even though a shred of her true self remains, claiming, then, that she wants to apologize for what she's done, that feeling isn't strong enough to make a difference. Her entire worldview begins to shift after this instance, and her moral compass is irreversibly affected. Meanwhile, she's somewhat aware of this, but she still feels unable to make changes to remedy that fact. Yet still, the pain she felt after the bullying that she endured remains only partially alleviated by her continuation of such behavior. She sorely believes that she'll recover now that she's begun the process again, making someone else the target instead of herself. But deep down, I believe she knows that the instantaneous flash of peace she may have felt is short-lived and false in nature, which results in the spat of laughter that she utters directly after that fact. It's implied that, after their interaction, the girl she bullied begins to bully others. The cycle continues to repeat itself, ensnaring everyone around her and thus infecting them with the same horrible condition. Just like eating and sharing contaminated food, the illness that they're saddled with sickens them and they seek to create that feeling for others, sharing the contamination amongst themselves with false ideas of inclusion in their minds. However, this is where I believe the song pulls one final punch. You see, in the beginning, the singer was told to end her life, and she mentions later that those involved with the bullying can't even die with grace, despite trying to. So in some way, it's largely implied that the others who were contaminated, and who went on to contaminate even more, ended their own lives when the stress and pain became too much for them to handle their deaths graceless as fallacies and trauma follow them to the grave. However, the singer has refused to seek respite this way, instead simply relaying that no one's around and once again, she's alone. But even then, the pain that she endured and has continued to experience won't subside or go away. Time may pass, new people may come along, but the past will always be shackled to her soul reminding her of the ordeal she'd endured. And it's possible that, because she refused to deal with things, she may continue to hurt others in an endless cycle of detriment, seeking reprieve, but no longer being personally able to find it. Being bullied in some regard is an incredibly traumatizing reality for many. Whether it's online or in real life, most of us have experienced some level of negative or targeted social pressure. Sometimes it may seem warranted, sometimes it's not. But either way, it's an unfortunate instance all the same. Our singer, it appeared, really hadn't done anything to gain this sort of reaction from those around her. Yet, she was still targeted all the same. This song does an amazing job at displaying the stages of contamination. At first, the singer is bullied. Then, to make herself feel better, she bullies someone else and so on and so forth. A lot of times, this is how a chain of actions can repeat itself, resulting in a truly traumatizing cycle of events that carries on long into the future. The psychology of this is clearly displayed, and that's what makes this song so insightful. Most often, people are bullied for a variety of reasons. Sometimes they're just different. Other times, they enjoy doing something that most would find odd or strange. They have unique interests, tastes, or styles. They don't socialize often, or they feel more comfortable on their own versus in large crowds. Maybe they come from different backgrounds, cultures, religions, or ethnicities. And, well, it shouldn't really matter at the end of the day. Because of these things, others can often find them hard to include in what is regarded as the more socially acceptable group. So, to personally alleviate those feelings of discomfort, they turn their hatred or distaste towards the person who stands out or is seen as different. 
That, unfortunately, is incredibly common. But situational bullying based on position is also a horrible reality all the same. Sometimes someone finds themselves in a position of power and goes on to use that position incorrectly, forming an unfair distinction between them and those below them. Other times, someone is simply bullied for being themselves. If you're kind, you're too kind and people see you as soft. If you're overly shy, then you become too reserved for others to want to connect with. And when the majority of those around you form an opinion like that, even if it's wrong, targeted bullying can occur. Once that becomes a reality, the cycle is started again, coming full circle when the bullied individual seeks relief by tossing the focus off of themselves and onto someone else they deem more deserving. The singer did so with someone who was compassionate and open because it was simple. Going after the bullies themselves was never on her radar. Instead, she picked a seemingly weaker individual and repeated the process from there. And unfortunately, in real life, this is often the case. So, how do we stop this toxic cycle? How do we interrupt the repetition? How do we extinguish the contamination? To answer that, let's refer back to the song's way of viewing things. Bacterial contamination in food can be prevented beforehand by cleanliness and sterilization, which is something we have to personally do in our lives. Cleaning away any unnecessary resentfulness that can crop up over small things and cause us to become bitter. If we do that, then when faced with a case of contamination, we can be ready to respond correctly. With food, cross-contamination is indeed possible and the contamination can rapidly spread if allowed to be within the same space as other foods. So, allowing any sort of toxicity to build up or remain around you can be incredibly detrimental. Oftentimes, contaminated food can be cured by proper heating and cooking techniques, which all correlate with the idea of fighting fire with facts. Bullies can only truly hold power over us when what they say and do is allowed to affect us. For example, if a bully told you that no one would ever love you, you could fight that by using facts. The truth is, at some point, someone in your life most likely cared about you. But even if you felt like that was false, the assumption that no one would ever love you has yet to be proven. If you haven't arrived on death's doorstep, then there is a grand possibility that you will find love at some point along your journey through the years. Therefore, this statement holds little to no water because not only is it inaccurate, but it's completely unfounded. Conversely, if a bully left trash in your locker, or stole your shirt and ran it through the mud, or spilt something on your favorite pair of shoes, then the actual reality is that you need to do some cleaning. That is a fact. And if you react to the fact of the situation without harboring animosity, simply dealing with what you've been handed, most bullies will begin to lose interest in bothering you, because your reaction is logical, not emotional. Instead of handing down the same sort of slander or hardship to another person to toss the heat off of yourself, it's far better to turn that heat in the right direction and cure the contamination at the source. This is a wonderful technique to implement. Cyberbullying can be treated the same way. Don't think that it's necessary to respond to inaccuracies. If you know them to be false, then that's what's most important. Before you engage, consider removing, blocking, or reporting those who are turning their hate in your direction and propagating fallacies. Things do change slightly if you're being bullied in a completely physical nature, which is actually considered a crime in quite a few areas, so long as it can be properly documented. In many states, there are indeed anti-bullying laws that require action to be taken immediately by law enforcement. If this bullying is being caused in school, this will also force those in charge of the school system themselves to act in the event that the situation is brought to their knowledge. In America, while these laws may differ state to state, they were put in place with the intention to truly crack down on bullying in its many different forms. But there is one defining factor that makes all the difference. For action to be taken, the person being bullied has to pluck up their courage and talk to someone they trust. This may seem like the hardest step, but it is one that's necessary for change to be enacted. If no one is aware of the events taking place, then they can do very little to change or stop them at all. You will never be considered weak for speaking up. In fact, that's one of the strongest things that you can do. You have to be the catalyst for the change that you want to see. If you're not doing it simply for yourself, 
imagine that you're doing it for those around you, preventing the process from reaching them through you at some point, thus ending the cycle of contamination before it can begin again. This is an incredibly touchy topic, so I'd like to open the comments section for anyone who'd like to share their story, or for anyone who needs advice. As a community, I know that we can put an end to this threat if we all react to it in the same manner. I had, during my school years, been able to step in to intervene on behalf of those who were experiencing some sort of bullying multiple times. And, while I never condone unneeded violence, there's something wonderful to be said about knowing how to protect yourself in the case that physical bullying occurs and you're put in a spot where you're being compromised and can't seek immediate help. As someone who's been teaching martial arts for many years, I can openly encourage you to seek out a dojo that offers self-defense classes or summer self-defense programs. Such places will allow you to have another level of physical assurance that if things do go sour and you've no way out, that you'll be able to handle things in the proper manner and put an end to the situation as calmly and kindly as possible. And yes, I can tell you that that's an actual reality. A lot of martial arts are seen as preservation arts where the intent is not to cause harm, but to stop harm from reaching yourself or those around you. Such arts are wonderful in that they give you the ability to end an altercation, most often without causing unprecedented amounts of harm to the individual who is instigating. On that note, I'd be intentional about what you tell a potential instructor so that they can best help you learn in a way that's tailored and targeted towards what you're dealing with. In closing, bullying is never okay. But consequential wrongs do not amount to a right. If you're in a position where you're being bullied, reach out to trusted individuals around you. Be comfortable bringing your concerns to those you rely on. That could be trusted friends, principals, teachers, and even eventually law enforcement. Anyone who may be able to assist you. If the bullying is online, document what's being said. If the bullying is physical, take stock of any injuries. Present your case to those who can make a difference and allow them to do their job. If for some reason that's not a possibility, or the deed is dealt with incorrectly, realize that the ultimate power lies in you. You can choose how you react to everything that happens. And given that fact, you're far more powerful than the people who stand over you. If you've a proper shield, it doesn't matter what sort of arrows fly at you, you'll be able to deflect them. So, shine your shield, and if given the chance, Remind those around you that they too have a shield as well, so long as they agree to reach down and pick it up. The power lies in their hands. Bullying is a trend that gathers incredible speed if allowed to do so, and can reach an insanely wide audience, just like with cases of bacterial contamination, where the bacteria can spread from food to food, and then food to people. Given that fact, it's up to us whether we step into its path and halt its progression, or we take it up ourselves and turn it towards those around us. I'd like to encourage you to make the right choice. After all, it's possible for the contamination to stop, so long as we address it correctly and put an end to its life. Don't be a part of the spread. Rather, be a part of the cure. Thank you for joining me for episode three of this very special series. I am so honored to have a platform where I can do projects like these and spread hope and awareness through our common interests. So once again, I just want to put this out there. If you have a story to share or hope you'd like to offer to others, please feel free to leave your comments in the comments section below this video. That being said, any negative or unkind comments will be removed. As I always say guys, don't hate, just relate. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, stay awesome.